hyper geometric probability distribution is very similar to the binomial. In fact, as a population gets larger, the two get closer. The binomial probability functions for properties are number one, the experiment consists of a sequence of n identical trials, two, outcomes, success or failure, are possible on each trial, three, the probability of success denoted p does not change from trial to trial. Number four, the trials are independent. The hypergeometric distribution's first two properties are identical to binomials, first two. Its third and fourth properties are similar to binomials, but a little different. Number three, the probability of a success changes from trial to trial. Number four, the trials are not independent. The hypergeometric probability distribution function is r choose x times n minus r choose n minus x divided by big N choose little n, where f of x is the probability of x successes in n trials, which is the same interpretation in binomial. n is the number of trials, which is the same as in bino binomial. Capital N, number of elements in the population, R is the number of elements in the population labeled successes. If n is large, the hypergeometric is binomial with the probability of success equal to r divided by big N. r choose x is the number of ways x successes can be selected from a total of r successes that are in the population. Suppose there are 7,500 male students that have game or can play basketball that have attended the university over the last 10 years. If you pick five male names from the campus directory at random and three of the five have game, then X would be three and R would be 7,500. Big N minus R, choose little n minus X, is the number of ways little n minus X failures can be selected from a total number of n minus R failure, failures in the population. If 7,500 of the 50,000 male students who have attended the university over the last 10 years had game, then 42,500 of those male students did not have game. So n minus r would be 42,500. If three of the five randomly chosen male students you picked from the campus directly have game, then two of the five do not have game. So n minus x would be two. Big N choose little n is the number of ways little n can be selected from the population of size big N. If 50,000 male students have attended the universities over the last 10 years, and five male students are randomly chosen from the campus directory, then big N is 50,000 and little n is five. In this example, Bob has mistakenly dropped four bad batteries in a kitchen drawer that contains a bunch of miscellaneous tools and other junk along with six good batteries. The ten batteries that are now in the drawer are never already brand batteries. Bob now randomly selects three batteries for his cordless beard shaver. What is the probability he selects one good battery? This is a hypergeometric problem because the population is very, very small. It's 10. Had there been a thousand batteries in this drawer, you could have used the binomial distribution. Note, with a thousand batteries in the drawer, if you use the hypergeometric distribution, you'll get the same exact number as the binomial because as the population, capital N, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, hypergeometric becomes binomial. To calculate the probability of getting one good battery when three are selected is found by plugging in X, which in this case equals one, the number of good batteries selected. N minus X equals two here because we, we, we picked three out of the drawer and only one is good. That means two of the batteries are bad. We, again, 
pick three batteries out of the drawer because we need three for the beard shaver. So N is three. R is the number of good batteries in the drawer, in the population. We, when we pull three out, that's a sample, N equal three. But we're picking that three from the ten batteries that are in the drawer, and six of them are good. N minus R is the number of bad batteries in the drawer. And N equal 10 is the number of batteries in total in the drawer. Plugging those numbers into the hypergeometric probability distribution function gives that, which simplifies to that, which ends up being 6 times 6 divided by 120, which is 0 0.30. So the probability of getting one of three of the batteries selected good is 0 0.3000. The mean of hypergeometric is n times r divided by capital N. Now remember, if n is really, really large, r is, r is going to be really, really large. r is the number of successes, n is the population size. So if n is big, r is probably going to be pretty big too. r divided by n is just p. So this is just n times p. So hypergeometric and binomial have the same expected value. The variance is a little different. Remember this, you can think of this as p, so we've got 1 minus p. So this part of the variance is the same as binomial. However, this is not equal to 1 unless n is very large. If capital N is really, really big relative to the number in the sample, then this is going to be close to 1. So the mean in the, the never-ready battery example is equal to 3 times 6 divided by 10. 6 divided by 10 is a probability of success on that first trial, which is 1.8. So we expect, in a sample of size 3, we expect 1.8 of the batteries to be good. The variance is found by taking the sample size 3 times the probability of success times 1 minus the probability of success times this finite population correction factor, which equals 0.56. Now we use the following equations to verify the shortcut equations are actually giving us the actual values of the variance and the expected value. In the table below, since we computed f of 1 already, it is listed in the table. The remaining values in this distribution can be computed by evaluating the hypergeometric probability distribution function at the values of x equals 0, 2, and 3. The probabilities of x equal to 0, 2, and 3 are 0 0.33, 0 0.50, 0 0.1667. To compute the mean, we must first compute the products of the values of x times the respective probabilities. The first product is 0 times 0 0.0333, which is 0. Then 1 times f of 1, 0 0.3000, is 0 0.3. 2 times f of 2 is probability, which is equal to 0 0.500, is 1. 3 times f of 3 is 0 0.1667, the probability of 3, which is 0.5. Summing this, we get 1.8, which is exactly what the shortcut equation gave us. We're going to use the volume table to verify the shortcut equation for the variance gives the actual value of the variance. The mean is 1.8. Subtracting 1.8 from 0 gives a deviation from the mean equal to negative 1.8. The second deviation from the mean is found by subtracting 1.8 from 1, which is a negative 0.8. The third deviation from the mean is found by taking 2 minus 1.8, which is 0.2. The fourth deviation from the mean is 3 minus 1.8, which is 1.2. The first squared deviation from the mean is negative 1.8 squared. The second squared deviation from the mean is found by squaring negative 0.8. The third squared deviation from the mean is found by squaring 0.2. The fourth squared deviation from the mean is found by scoring 1.2. Next we can we 
multiply the square deviation for the mean times its probability. So 3.24 times f of 0, the probability that x equals 0, is 0 0.108. 0 0.64, the second square deviation for the mean, times f of 1, the probability that x equal 1, which is 0 0.3, equals 0 0.192. 0 0.04, the third square deviation from the mean, times f of 2, the probability that x equal 2, which is 0 0.5000, is 0 0.020. 0 1.44, the fourth square deviation from the mean, times f of 3, its probability, is 0 0.240. Sum that up, and you get the same exact number for the variance that we found using the shortcut equation for the variance. The hypergeometric probability distribution can be used to compute the probability of picking the first five numbers of the Powerball lottery. Suppose I play the Powerball when the jackpot is $20 million and choose 1, 4, 28, 30, and 53 on the first five numbers and choose 37 for the Powerball. I will win $20 million if the winning numbers are 1, 4, 28, 30, 53, with a Powerball of 37. The number of non-Powerball ping pong balls in the jar at the start of the game is 59. The probability of getting the Powerball correct when there are 39 ping pong balls to select from is 1 divided by 39. Before we can compute the probability of winning the lottery, we have to compute the probability of getting the first five non-powerball numbers correct. To do this, we have to understand that there are 59 ping pong balls in the jar before the game starts. And as ping pong balls are pulled out of the jar, they're not being put back in. Given the first five balls have already been picked, the probability of picking the powerball correctly, as we said earlier, is 1 divided by 39. The probability of getting the first five balls correct is a bit more difficult. N in the hypergeometric probability distribution function is equal to 59 since this is the number of ping pong balls in the jar containing the non-powerball ping pong balls. R is in the hypergeometric probability distribution function is equal to 5 since 5 of the 59 have to be winners. N in the hypergeometric probability distribution function is equal to 5 since you pick 5 balls from this jar. X in the hypergeometric probability distribution function is equal to 5 since 5 of the ones that you picked have to be winners. Substituting these numbers into the function yields 5 choose 5 which equals 1 times 54 choose 0 which equals 1. Divided by 59, choose 5, which equals 5,006,386. In the numerator we have 1 times 1, which is 1. In the denominator we have 5,006,386. So the probability of getting the first five numbers right is 0 0.00000019970. So the probability of getting all six balls correct is the probability of getting the first five right and, and the Powerball correct. Now, at the beginning of this chapter, I said the single most important concept, one of them in this chapter, is if I'm talking about two events, event A and then event B, and event A, these fall balls are correct, and B, this ball is correct. If those two events are independent, A and B, then the probability of A and B is the product of the probabilities. So the probability of the first five balls are correct and the power ball is correct is equal to the probability that the first five are correct times the probability that the Powerball is correct. So we get a number that's even closer to zero. Now let's calculate the expected winnings. 
if you get the first five and the Powerball correct, we used this equation to calculate the expected winnings. Now, the probability of winning is a number close to zero, this number here. Now, if we win, we get, we had to pay a dollar. We get $20 million minus a dollar. Now, if we lose, this is the probability. It's found by subtracting this from one. And so this is the probability of losing. And if we lose, well, we lose the dollar. So we take the, how much money we pay to play times the probability of losing plus the amount of money we win minus the dollar times the probability of winning and we get a negative 90 cents so what does this mean well it means if you play a dollar every week for the rest of your life you're voluntarily paying taxes of 90 percent on every dollar you spend to buy a piece of paper now if the Powerball jackpot goes up to 30 million because nobody won last week, then the expected payout goes down. It gets less negative because the government needs to entice you to gamble your one dollar. If the Powerball is 20 million dollars and you pay ten dollars a week to play the lottery and you play 50 weeks a year, maybe you take two weeks off for vacation. You're going to spend $500 a year on the lottery. So you're going to spend a total of $25,000 over the course of 50 years. We'll assume the inflation rate is 0%. Now, with this expected payout of negative 90 cents, what that means is you're going to spend $25,000. You're going to lose $22,500 over the course of that 50 years. Now, if you had invested the $500, again, assuming there's no inflation, if you invested $500 a year for 50 years, every year you put that $500 into an account, earning, say, 10%. Well, over the course of the 50-year period, at 10% annually, that $500 turns into about $640,000. Now, instead, if you had invested in something that was only paying you, say, 5%, saving $500 a year instead of playing the lottery would net you $110,000 over 50 years. So you can play the lottery, lose $22,500, or you can invest that money, and you're going to make $110,000 at 5%, or about $640,000 at 10%. This is exactly why I think it was the Dallas or the Houston NAACP recently is calling for a ban on the Powerball because they know and statisticians and economists know that the lottery is really a tax on poor people. A voluntary tax on poor people.